So here we are at uh, Osculum. Some of the first, not fighting, but movements happened already. With the Greeks pushing forward towards the stream, uh, moving the elephants forward, they actually took a pass over here, and the Romans reacting by moving some of their own forces uh, and repositioning so that they have a better chance of getting across. No strong commitment either way, but this is, I mean, this was set up this way to go here. So it's not a huge shock, and the Romans are trying to shift some more forces to cover because they're not sure how hard, how well they can defend this. What we're seeing right now is just about uh, this tribune here is just about ready to get his action. Now, I think no one else can. Oh, I could use this tribune instead. And both of them are going to go before any Greeks go unless there's a trump. The interesting thing here is I've got to decide, do I want to attack these hoplites? Right now I'm sitting on higher terrain, which is a defensive bonus. So I probably do not. The stream, however, does not provide a defensive bonus from what I can tell. It's kind of tough to see because a tiny, tiny print here. This is all the column adjustments. They, I think they're in the rules as well. But that's a, a painful aspect to these charts. Uh, I don't see a better version either. Oh, wait. That's the cohesion hit. Yeah. This one's just as bad. So, that's kind of a shame. And, you know, uh, for something that they... Uh, maybe the, the, the deluxe version has better components for this. But... In terms of a player aid chart, I shouldn't have to. You know, a lot of us are getting older. Now, my eyes are still pretty good, but this is pretty ridiculous. I'd like to be able to see it, you know, sitting on the table here. And anyway, <laughs> these charts, the missile one too, a lot of that. And they, I'd just rather have, you know, somewhat more usable player aids than have to squint up real close. All right. So I think the Romans are going to stand there, but they're probably going to reposition. So it looks like they got some cav behind them to now to help in case there's an attack that breaks through. And they're hoping to get some more forces across the uh, across the main river because, including a couple of these ox carts to handle the elephant threat. All right. Well, I'll continue. Okay, so we started things off. We marked that first turn off. It's done. The lines, what have they done? Well, nothing too exciting. I mean, both sides are kind of following their plan. The Greeks moving up to the river, moving the cab, moving the, uh, the elephants. Uh, Romans trying to react to that sliding over, but they don't want to totally denude the center because there's still a strong Greek line here. And... If it could cross mainly unimposed, it would do a lot of damage. Uh, forgot about these guys. And those are the ox. Uh, got the calves, the Greek calves sliding off to the flank. Looks like they're going to take a chance at crossing the river. They're only facing infantry up here. Of course, it's not in the best terrain for calf to be operating in. So... Maybe that's just a feint. Hard to tell. The Roman commander is all the way over here, though. Which is going to make things harder to... He can't create automatic line commands because of that. And being on a, the, That particular console ended up getting the role for command. For whatever reason, I put him over on a wing. And that probably wasn't the wisest thing. I mean, want to spend some effort switching... My two consoles are getting someone else decent over here to come in because you don't want somebody who can't handle the uh, the necessary number of units. Uh, another thing is these units have become kind of disorganized. They're no longer in a decent line. As you see, the Greeks have tried to keep a pretty good line. They've got one here that's separate from this line. But otherwise, they've maintained line formation pretty much everywhere, you know, except for 
the skirmishers. Uh, and the Romans have two largely. They're, they've got a few commanders, so it's not too big a deal, but over here, it definitely looks like a command weakness. They have to get somebody over there in addition to the consul, I think. Uh, we'll see. All right, well, it should be interesting. Wow, that's really impressive to me. And it's a lot of battlefield. It's not being used yet. Reminds me, uh, for whatever reason, the length of the board, whatever, and maybe the big empty terrain and kind of some rough areas and the jagged up going north of a uh, little bit of some of the North Africa campaign type games. Just the shape of, <laughs> of the playing surface more than anything else. And, and the fact that all the all the action's in one place and there's a lot of area that's not, but... Okay. And we have the first great crunch. Starting things off, uh, we didn't take the elite leader bonus. A little bit happened. Some oxen were moved. A lot of continuations there. Uh, and there's another crappy Roman leader down here who moved a couple units. But the big attack... Uh, the hoplites, well, I don't even know if these are hoplites. We just had these, came crashing through against the hill, legion, or, legion with terrain advantage, crossing the stream, taking uh, a cohesion hit for doing that. Yet still, they gave almost as good as they got, even though out, they were outnumbered because the line was a little longer than they could move with a crappy leader in. Um, so, you know, we have one routed Greek, one routed Roman, but overall, I can't be too unhappy as the Greeks with what happened there. Uh, we'll, we'll see if they can bring their next line up and do more. They didn't get a continuation. If they had, they would have been able to do that right away and then really get a view of what's going on, maybe break something open, get some calf moving or something. But it stands, it looks like, they're going to be slugging it out, pushing it along this this river line. Okay, second turn. This is out of 12 for the first day. Remember, the second day can take as long as it likes. Uh, Greeks already have taken some losses. Um, big, heavy infantry units. Uh, How did that happen? Oh, we had a rally attempt that failed. Okay. The uh, Greek second part of the line smashed in. Didn't really get much traction, only two units hitting. This one there was no real room for unless I wanted to go charging into the woods. Romans have a couple units fleeing. Not a lot happening in that front. This is It's hard to push through here because of the terrain, the good units, whatever, the stream. I'm sure it's easier than pushing along this river. Greek Cav, spreading out more. Still not sure it wants to go across. And we've got the Roman infantry sliding into place. Yeah, they're probably the same, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, sliding into place to try to prevent that movement. On the other hand, the main Greek line of infantry is beginning to look a little more threatening, but again, coming coming through this stuff, if you count the amount of cohesion hits that you take, and you can't rally in any of that, uh, you can only rally in clear terrain. Number of cohesion hits, we're going to be talking a marsh, that's one. Uh, deep river, that's going to be another one. Maybe Rocky River, that's two. Probably another marsh on the other side. Wow, we're at three. Uh, no, at four. Four cohesion hits just to get across. Javelin throw, that brings us to five. Ah! Most of these are routed. <laughs> so, it just looks impossible. It looks impossible. I mean, even if it was unopposed, even if the Romans were back a little bit, They'd still get pushed. They'd still push the Greeks back into the, into the river. I think so. I mean, you just don't want to fight with that kind of disadvantage. So the only place to really fight is right here, and that's 
you know, defensive terrain, but it's not ridiculous like the river is. All right. Okay, so here we go to the end of the third turn. And we got another 35 point great gloss. That happened, uh, Paris was unable, he broke a nine on one of his uh, routed units. The rest he rallied. The Romans, on the other hand, have a couple of routed units that are running away. Somebody could run in and still rally them. There's a lot of space there. But they don't have a lot of infantry commanders up here, and they're feeling some pressure with the Greek cav sliding into position, as well as the infantry. It looks like the Greeks might actually make an attack across the river. Certainly over here, where, there's almost, where it would be almost unopposed, I think they'll probably try to bring their cav over, see what it can do. Because if they can start to defeat the Roman uh, right flank over here, which has no cav to support it whatsoever. Now, we know that's kind of an iffy situation. We saw cav against legion. Hmm, so, so, the cav has a definite advantage, but in this kind of wood terrain, how good is it? I don't know. But the Greeks might want to try. Uh, if they can try to push that forward, that opens things up here. So either the Romans will have to slide across and try, you know, to fill in that gap in order to fight, in which case maybe the infantry can come across, or maybe the cav will just actually be able to pull the, push the infantry back. On the other hand, of course, the infantry in that kind of rough terrain might do better and might just be able to halt the cav. It's a little dis uh, disorganized looking, though. We've switched the commanders, uh, Decius... Mus has moved over here and left Sulpicius over here. He has a larger command rating, less of a morale bonus, but it's really unlikely that the infantry is going to be able to actually attack. Over here, well, I mean, we saw what happened. We got the elephants, we got the cav in place. The Romans are uh, positioning themselves better defensively, but not much has changed there. All we're seeing is the units are ready again. It's pretty dense, though, in terms of what the Greeks have here, which means some of their weak front-line units, if they break, they could end up sending the whole line kind of crumbling. Yeah. I mean, they could end up weakening the line. They're not going to send it all, fall, all back. This comes off. It's kind of tough to see whether those phalanxes can be put into play. If I can't clear uh, into this kind of rough terrain here, not really rough, but a little bit of hill, I just do not see how the, uh, the phalanxes are going to be able to deploy easily. But I got a lot committed there. All right. So I'm going to send this one up. So interestingly... The uh, hoplites are actually cracking the legionary line, and that's mainly, even though the legions have an advantage in terms of location, a slight advantage on the um, Clash of Spears chart, the hoplites have a much, much higher morale, 7 versus 5, to what I had deployed. I didn't have the best Roman units there yet. Uh, we did see, though, uh, a situation where Two units were advancing. A unit here had to route. Two places it could go. Actually, three units had an advance possibility. It could only advance into these two. There were units in both of them, so it had to go through one. My interpretation of the rules, which may or may not be correct, was that all the routes happened before any of the advances happened. So it had to dislodge. It had to move, route through another unit, which routed that other unit. <laughs> I think that's the correct interpretation there. It certainly makes sense uh, when you try to picture what's going on. Otherwise, there would be kind of a traffic jam going on. All right, so that was uh, Pyrrhus's elite leader attack or action was to basically try to break that line. And he's done a pretty good job. Now he's got follow-ups 
coming across, but he's got to face a lot of Roman cav over here. It's not a lot, and there's not much in the way of infantry left. Got one unit here, one here, and one here. And this guy back there. Uh, so it's definitely turning into an interesting little fight down there so far. So the Greeks have brought their elephants up and actually routed a unit with them uh, on a head-to-head -head attack going uphill, which isn't to the elephant's advantage, but the Romans had taken some losses. They also brought some of their uh, yeah, their lighter and royal ca uh, Roman cav forward uh, as well to try to engage. The elephants should be very good against the cavalry. There are a couple of ox carts up here, though, which... If the elephants just stand and let them get close, could be a problem. Of course, as long as there's uh, some Greek infantry to march forward, or Italian infantry, how the case may be, these are Epirians, so they're Greeks, um, those cards aren't going to be able to do much of anything. The Romans, meanwhile, are trying to rally their line, and they succeeded partway, to put something in the way that might stop those elephants because a bunch of calves just ain't going to do it. All right.